And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Bunny. Did you did you get that? Did you get my bunny? I got your bunny. Okay. Are you ready for another exciting installment of Bunny Versus starring the incomparable Bunny Williams? Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you ready and raring to go, Bunny? Let's do this shit. All right. Well, without any further ado, it's time once again for Bunny Versus. And now here is your host, Bunny Williams. Take it away, Bunny. I was only a little late this time, and come on, man. How do you expect me to just walk away from Oogie Loves on a Meat Hook? I get that. You know... I 100% get that. You know, and... And, and, and something... Something... You made a joke about Wish.com, and yeah, it was a funny joke. Oh, ha, ha. You know... But I don't think you truly recognize the technology that Wish.com represents. After all of these years, you can finally run a website right out of the trunk of your car. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's a good idea. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I thought of it during the last segment. By the time, by the time it fully formed... We were like three subjects away from it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for thank you for bringing that back. That's really good. Thank you. I'm eating so, fried chicken during the show like a true professional. So I, I, I'm I'm clearing the table, okay? To ask this one question: How was your week? <laughs> Oh, yeah, my week has been great. My week has been wonderful. Oh. Super good. So much fun. Um, I, 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 I have bipolar disorder, and my emotions have been pinballing a lot lately. Uh... I think as I get older, my uh, bipolar is getting onto center stage more. I feel like before this, it was just something on the sidelines, and now my bipolar is, like, starring in the show. And I found that one of the things that helps calm down my bipolar disorder... I don't mean to laugh at that, but that was a funny way of putting it. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think that one of the ways that my bipolar calms itself down is just by, by having a schedule, you know? And so I, I like it when the kids are in school because I have to adhere by a specific schedule. I'm, I, I, I set my alarm for 6.15 so I can be out of bed in order to wake Eleanor up at exactly 6.30 because that's how much, time's, how much time it takes for Eleanor to finally wake up, take her super long poop in the morning, take their super long uh, uh, bathroom trip, and then eat food, brush their teeth, get their hair combed, get ready for school, and then by that time... We're ready to leave so I can take them to school. But first, I go into Mal's room and I wake up Mal. The preliminary wake up. There might be two or three more wake up attempts later, but that's the preliminary one. Mal has gotten a lot better at waking up for school in the sense that they are no longer cussing me out and wishing me death. Okay. Every time I wake them up. And the funny part is, I am not joking. So I get home from dropping Eleanor off at school. I'm waking Mal up, making sure they either get to the bus or if they can't walk to the bus stop, I can drive them to the bus stop. And if they miss the bus, I can take them to school. And I'm trying not to get angry or upset about that. If I have to drive them to school, I have to drive them to school. It's not a big deal in the long run. And then uh, I come home 
maybe have a little bit of breakfast, set up Maxwell's virtual school, do virtual school with him for about two hours, two and a half hours, and then it's lunchtime and I give him a break and then we're back to school. And then by the time we're done with the second half of school, it's time to pick up Eleanor. And so I, it's a very rugged, it, it, it's, it's very structured my day when the kids are in school and it helps me uh, keep my bipolar in check because I don't have time to be emotional because I have things that I need to do and a big long to-do list and all of these things. Uh, so then Wednesday, it was two of my kids' birthdays. I have five kids and they have three birthdays. Okay. I still find this fascinating. Okay, but can we go back to Tuesday? Hmm? Can we go back to Tuesday when our fucking water heater exploded? Oh, yeah, our water heater. I totally forgot about the water heater. Our water yeah. heater exploded. No, and it I started the flooding. Water heater. Yeah, it started flooding parts of the house. It, it, it just, all of a sudden, it sounded like there was a, a toilet that was flushing in the house. And it wouldn't stop flushing. So I go into the bathroom and everything's fine that's when i hear the noise behind me and it's the water heater in the hallway that is, had apparently sprung a leak and it started leaking throughout the house there was water coming out of the laundry room and the closets uh in the hallway and going through uh amber and mal's closet in their room and we were getting all these towels and we had to call someone to come in and fix it so we got a new water heater that was a bitch and then the next day it was mal and maxwell's birthday maxwell turned 10 mal turned uh, 16 yeah so, and then Mal had a doctor's appointment, so Mal didn't go to school. And then Natasha had the day off, and that threw off my whole day because I, I need the structure. And then that threw me off, and then it, it threw off the rest of the week. One week I forgot to wake up Mal for school. Uh, yeah. Friday. On Friday, that had never happened before. But probably has something to do with Thursday and losing internet. And then and on, we losing, lost it on Thursday. We lost it on we, Thursday. And then on Thursday we lost the internet. And so we've been and living we on were, like uh, we hotspots and stuff like that. Informed that Eleanor and I had a direct exposure. Yep. And then Eleanor and Natasha had a di who? direct exposure to COVID yeah. by a relative who will remain nameless. Uh, that's her. To be, a, I'm not mentioning any names, but I will say that I found it to be almost funny that this person said, well, I can't get the vaccine because I, I, you know, I've been doing research. Suddenly everyone is a research scientist and a lot of people are getting sick when they get the vaccine and I can't miss a day of work. I can't miss a day. I am the manager. I can't miss a single day of work. And congratulations, you will now not be working until October. Yeah. Hooray! Jeannie and I both had like zero side effects from the vaccine, right? Right. I just felt crummy for like two days. No, but not no, sick. I just yeah. felt like... Because of that, now Eleanor does to go back to school until the 30th. Yeah, and because of the direct exposure, Eleanor won't be going back to school until the 30th. It throws off my whole everything. And because yeah. we have no internet, I can't go back so, to work until it's fixed. Yeah. And I can't so go into work at the office because of my direct exposure. So Steve's all fucked up. Yeah. And because <laughs> Natasha is trying to, to spend most of her time away from the rest of the family... I've just, I've just been, I've just been doing everything, I'm and it's consistent. been very, huh? I'm consistent. You are very consistent, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing a lot of stuff. So, I, I, if I, Eleanor, I, I, wait, if Eleanor was exposed, did, she, did, didn't you get her tested? Uh, honey, do you want to talk about Eleanor getting tested? Yeah, no, that's not happening. 
That's not happening. Sorry, that's too traumatic. It was too traumatic when we did it last year when the whole family had COVID. And then when the doctor insisted that they get tested with Maxwell when Maxwell had strep, even though I knew it was strep and not COVID, uh, it was worse because they've had a year of growth. So they were fighting and they're stronger. They were like, literally kicking and screaming and fighting and biting. and Not biting. It, there was no biting. It, it, but yeah, punching and kicking and screaming, I had to hold them down. Like, I mean, it was way too traumatic. I will never do that again. You, like the last time that Eleanor got tested, I swear to God, they were going to get out the straps. I wow. was the strap. Like, it was bad, and the screaming was just, oh, my God. It, 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 it was heartbreaking. But, yeah, so we're in a difficult position where it's like, Eleanor has had direct exposure to someone with COVID and Eleanor needs to get tested. And also we can't fucking do that. Yeah. You know, like everyone else in the house can get tested. Eleanor, we, we can't, we can't make Eleanor do that again. Nope. At all. Period. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, so that has been my, that has been my week. It's been hell. I haven't been getting a lot of sleep. I've been waking up a lot at night. I've been getting like about four to six hours a night. It, it's, it, yeah, it's been, it's been a rough week for me, but, uh, yeah, so that's been my week. It's been super fun. How are you, Bunny? Uh, we had ice cream last night. <laughs> you know, uh, that, that was nice. Uh, I kind of, kind of, <laughs> that kind of felt a little bit like a dig. I know you don't me you didn't mean for it to be a dig, but I it didn't sounded mean for it, it to be a, like dig. a dig. I meant it to, to be a contrast, like like. Can I tell you one more? Damn, life's been really been been going pretty good. <laughs> Comparatively, yeah. you have had a rough week, sir, and yeah, you know, and, and I like to keep tabs on you. Just to remind you, I'm out here, you know. Yeah, but other than that, uh, the first part of Dabney is finished for the first episode. Nice. I have to finish up the Interocitor. And the ah, other the bit should be a lot quicker. Yeah. So that's about it. There. The rave bit is pretty fucking hysterical. I think. I like it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The animation is kind of on the crappy side, but I think but it's a fun little point. bit. And it's not like I haven't put out something that was on the crappy side before. <laughs> But that's the point. It doesn't need to be that great. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. People will be watching a new skill emerge and develop. So, yeah. And that's awesome. There you go. So, really, that's about it. You've had a rough ride. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah that's been rough i've been trying to focus on little things to uh get my mind off of other things um i cleaned up the front yard i did a ton of yard work uh, in the backyard yesterday cleaned off the porch and then uh, and then like i'm done doing like three hours of work outside in the heat and i'm like oh man i mowed and I cleaned up the yard and I was moving all of these things and I'm like, oh my God, this is the most Mexican I've ever been in my life. <laughs> oh, my inner yard worker came out. And it's like, oh shit, this, is, this, this has been a powerful moment for my people. <laughs> So that's been good. Uh, I'm working on a new diet book. Um, yeah. So I've lost a, a, a good deal of pounds uh, lately. 
at at my highest, I was like 216 pounds, 218 pounds, something like that. I'm down to 193. Yeah. Which is um, the lightest I've been in some time. So I'm already working on a diet book. I'm calling it the depression diet. And this is how you lose pounds. You just convince yourself that you're a horrible person that doesn't need to eat. Yes. Oh, I've been there. Hey, if you already have low self-esteem, why don't you use that low self-esteem to burn those pounds? (laughs) And it's like, hey, welcome to my diet video. Okay, step one. Let me tell you about all the diseases children are dying of. Are you depressed yet? Yeah. So that's going to be my diet. Like, I depress you, and that helps you lose weight. It, it's going to be revolutionary. You're yeah. going to have my own talk show. Yeah. So, yeah, my week has been great. Super fun. I, I love not having the internet. Yeah. I recently, Jeannie and I both recently watched what is now like probably one of the scariest, scariest movies I know. Even though I had seen it before, it has gotten actually a lot scarier over time. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, featuring a cameo by Donald J. Trump. There you go. Is that I it? was thinking Soil and Green. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, I've been thinking, dude. I've been thinking a lot about Soil and Green lately because there's a scene in the second Boss Baby movie where, where they're trying to infiltrate this like high-end private school and when kids are bad, they're put in timeout pods. And I'm like, uh, kids, I don't know how to fully explain this to you, but the timeout pods are eerily similar to how people kill themselves in Soylent Green. Yeah. And they're in this white, like, eggshell type room and these beautiful scenes are playing as this gentle music just lulls them to sleep. And it's yeah. like, shit, like, is this kid's movie featuring the suicide chamber from the end of Soylent Green? Because that's a <laughs> fucked up reference for a kid's movie. Yeah. So you watch Soylent Green? Oh, yes. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, it's, it's gotten scarier over time because, like, we are so much closer We're to so it. close. So like fucking close. Like I, I, I can completely envision what you see in Soil and Green happening in ten years from now. Ten years. Yeah. yeah. Um The world well, is destroyed, food is scarce, women are property, women are furniture. You know? Yep. I want to do a sequel to Soil and Green. Uh, too Soylent, Too Green. That's the name. <laughs> and then Charlton Heston's character delves deeper into Soil and Green. And he learns that, like, each day is a different color. Like, oh, Tuesday is Soylent Blue. Wednesday is fucking Soylent Chartreuse. I don't know. Yes. But he learns that, like, oh, Soylent Green is people. Okay, but did you know Soylent Yellow uh, raccoons? Yeah. Soylent Blue days? Oh. Well, what they never, what they never really ever mention, you know, is that it's Nabisco. It's made by Nabisco. You know. I would imagine. I would imagine if Soylent Green was going to be anyone, they would be Nestle. Nestle, you think? Oh, yeah. Because yeah, they're the ones who are stealing our water and then bottling it and then selling it to us. So I imagine that they would also be the company that gets humans and turns them into food for humans. 
That sounds like Nestle's M.O. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is true. But yeah, the, this is what I'm getting at. This is going to be the sequel. So it's like, oh, Soylent Green is people. Okay, but there's different Soylents. What's everything else? So Charlton Heston goes on a quest to find out what the other colors are. Yeah. And then I'd like to see him combine all the different colors to maybe form some sort of giant Japanese robot. Yeah. You know, get some get some Voltron in this. Um It would help brighten the apocalypse, is all I'm really saying. You know? Some giant robot giant robots. If we're going to die as a species, which it seems like psh, it's just fucking inevitable, let's have some fun with it. Yeah, let's just have some fun with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. When was that movie set? That's one of those movies that was set for recently. Um... The year is 2015. Huh? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I think we're getting into children of men territory now. Hmm. Which is I just a like movie. those. I don't know why I never went back to it. I've only seen it the once. Children of men? Yeah. Oh, I love food. Food is good. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we all lived happily ever after. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that's about it in that case. Um... Uh, what's happening? Um, it's about, it's a short said. one about... Did you like that? A, I did. I liked yeah. that. It's a short one about baseball. Because as you know, I know so much about baseball. Yes. Oh, I am such a sports guy. So we're going to be talking about who I fully believe to be one of the greatest baseball players of all time. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Well, in that case, let's mosey on over to Shap Town. <laughs> Shap Town. So for this week, this is Bunny Williams saying self-adhesive tape? Yes, please. The and best tagline in the bed. Yeah.